What is this amazing cosmic creation caught by Hubble? This magnificent image you're looking at right now may appear to be CGI, but it's actually one of the Hubble telescope's most recent breathtaking photos. This is a genuine, uncommon, and intriguing object. The spectacular photograph depicts a Her Big Harrow object, or HH for short, a rather rare cosmic event. These Herbic Harrow objects are among the most magnificent wonders in our universe, which we can occasionally see through our own telescopes. The Hubble Space Telescope's Wide Field Camera 3, or WFC3, captured this image of HH111. HH111 is approximately 1,300 light years or 400 parsec from Earth, and is embedded in the Karmateri Molecular Cloud L1617. These magnificent objects emerge under very specialized conditions. So in this video, we'll go over how this system works, what mechanisms are involved in the production of these objects, and what's going on in this specific system. Long ago, when our sun was developing, it's extremely likely that it also generated HH objects. This is due to the fact that HH objects are brilliant areas of nebulosity associated with nascent stars. These are generated as a result of young stars ejecting incredibly intense, hot, and narrow jets of partially ionized gas, which subsequently collide with neighboring gas clouds at high speeds. HH objects are frequently observed in star-forming areas, and many are seen clustered around a single star with its rotational axis aligned. Her big harrow objects are a transient phenomena that can vary their visible over periods of a few years, as they swiftly migrate away from their parent star into the dense clouds of interstellar space. Shabon Wesley discovered these HH objects in the 19th century and identified them as a separate form of emission nebula. Guillermo Harrow and George Herbig were the first astronomers to investigate them. Herbig and Harrow were independently working on star formation when they discovered these objects and realized. They were a byproduct of the star formation process. These objects are typically the result of the jet's interaction with the gas surrounding the star. So, how does it all work? It all starts with a massive cloud of gas. This gas coalesces and commences the birth of a star by inducing the gravitational collapse of the interstellar gas itself. There are many of these clouds throughout the galaxy, and we have studied several of them. As more and more of the gas collapses, the density and opacity rise. This means that it is difficult to see through these clouds, because they can no longer emit much energy. This elevates the temperature of the cloud, preventing it from further collapsing and establishing a hydrostatic equilibrium. In a rotating disk, the gas continues to fall towards the center. This core is known as a protostar, and it is located at the system's center. It is not yet a star, it is simply a concentration of matter that will spin extremely fast at some point. While material falls into the core object and accretion disk as expected, other material is expelled from the system in both directions, perpendicular to the plane of the disk, which is also known as a bipolar outflow. When the materials in the bipolar outflow travel at extremely high speeds, they are referred to as jets. The mechanism behind these collimated bipolar jets is unknown. But it is thought that interaction between the accretion disk and the stellar magnetic field accelerates some of the accreting material from within a few astronomical units of the star away from the disk plane. These jets have a significant impact on these stars, potentially causing the star to lose a significant amount of mass that it would otherwise have accumulated. These jets appear to be present in almost every star system, they are also in charge of recycling a large amount of material, enabling for the production of new stars in the future. Aside from that, many different magnetic interactions are occurring at the same time, which is most likely the cause of these jets. This magnetic connection occasionally nourishes the star, allowing it to grow in size. As the power of these jets increases, they begin to throw off a lot of mass, resulting in the HH formations that we see. But, more crucially, these jets are responsible for removing extra angular momentum from the spinning, therefore stars would not form if these jets did not exist. The star would spin so fast that it would finally shatter apart and lose its shape. However, in this case, the jets remove the angular momentum and cause the star to slow down just enough for it to begin growing larger and larger. 
However, because these objects are inside larger clouds, the jets as they move away from the star begin to collide with more dense parts of the clouds, creating a much brighter patch of this what is known as nebulosity. We have some incredible images of HH-34 and HH-161 to prove it. In HH-34, we can clearly see the star ejecting this extremely hot jet, which then collides with a dense area of gas, resulting in a highly ionized gas that glows and emits a lot of energy. These objects can live for tens of thousands of years and change visible on periods of a few years, as they quickly migrate away from their parent star into the dense clouds of interstellar space. They change a lot, and they actually release distinct light at different frequencies and vary their luminance every now and again. This is a time-lapse as NASA's animation on the screen vividly depicts the evolution of this jet over the course of 14 years. Overall, these jets are well-studied phenomenon. They are normally visible in infrared light, although some are also visible in optical light. The brightest Herbuck Harrow objects, on the other hand, are seen towards the endpoints of the jet, where the material is plowed straight into the surrounding molecular cloud. They evolve across periods of years in a very dynamic manner, as shown before in the simulation. Temperatures of typical HH items are around 11,000 Kelvin. These were once extremely unusual, but with advancements in technology, they are becoming more common. We have observed approximately 600 of these HH objects to date, all of which are in star formation zones. These HH things are likewise constantly moving. They move as the jet travels through the cloud, extending more and further away from the star system or protostar system, but even over a few years, they can shift enough to be apparent to the naked eye. Even though it is a long process, if you take photos a few years apart, you can clearly see the difference, which is plainly the jet going away. But how huge is it all? The majority of HH objects are within one parsec, 3.26 light years, of the source, while some have been found to be several parsecs away. They are always found around the star's rotating axis because it is where the jets that collide with the clouds are released. However, these are not the same as the jets of a neutron star or a black hole. The speed of the HH jets is substantially slower, usually less than a thousand kilometers per second or a few hundred kilometers per second, which is around a thousand times slower than the speed of a neutron star or a black hole. The fact that HH111 is a binary star HH system makes it unique. The system most likely looks like the image on your screen. We can detect a massive jet and a somewhat smaller jet moving almost perpendicularly, indicating that the two stars here are misaligned. Intriguingly, there is apparently a third star that is not releasing any jets, which can be seen in the upper left corner. In fact, this star appears to have been booted out of the system. HH111 is around 1,300 light years, 400 parsec, away from Earth, therefore you'll need a pretty strong telescope to see anything. The new image of HH111 was created by combining multiple infrared images acquired from Hubble's Wide Field Camera 3, WFC3. To sample different wavelengths, for filters were utilized. The color is produced by assigning different hues to each monochrome image associated with a specific filter. As a result, telescopes and technology play a significant role in our exploration of such objects. But there is one more fascinating aspect to these HH items. HH objects are created not just by stars, but also by lesser stars such as brown dwarfs. Scientists detected at least one brown dwarf or proto-brown dwarf in 2017, that appears to be generating these jets as well as HH objects. However, little is known about them, and much research is ongoing. As our technology advances, we shall learn more and more about these unusual and wonderful artifacts in the future. Also, this phenomena appears to exist everywhere in the cosmos and appears to help a lot of stars evolve in some way, and those jets undoubtedly help a lot. What are your thoughts on these amazing visual phenomena? Can there be more HH things near us? Please leave your ideas and questions in the comments area below. Remember to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell symbol to be notified of future outstanding videos like this. Thank you very much.